Hello, I'm Chris Williams. It's Wednesday, the 1st of September 2010, and welcome to my 300th video blog. Today, I'm going to be talking about Tony Blair's memoir, as is obviously the case as I'm holding up my copy. And uh, very brief, I'm also going to mention, uh, for those of you in the United Kingdom interested with uh, British politics, I'm going to be uh, talking about the uh, what is breaking news as I talk about the uh, William Hague situation, uh, but uh, uh, that's coming up uh, after my opening scenes and an advert for my sister's sticker and trading card business. <laughs> So yes, uh, before I talk about Tony Blair, I'm going to talk about the uh, William Hague allegations. Um, of course, I blog from Wales, as you will have noticed from my opening scenes, and uh, of course, uh, when he was Welsh Secretary, there were rumours then of him being homosexual. I remember uh, my family and I were surprised when it was on the news that he was getting engaged to Fionn Jenkins, as he was then. And the, indeed, I'm a Conservative myself, even though I've got... Blair's memoirs, uh, that I follow politics in general, but um, um, it says in uh, William Hague's biography, uh, I can't remember who wrote that biography, uh, Joanne Nadler, I think her name was, but it says in there that uh, no, that contains interviews with William Hague, where he emphasises that uh, he is not homosexual, and indeed it appears to me that these allegations have emerged in the uh, UK press about him today are just a rehashing of false and hateful allegations that have been made against him in the past. And of course, th there's been a man who uh, has resigned from his job working for William Hague because of the embarrassment that's been s caused to him by these false and malicious allegations. I did say to my parents uh, the other day, actually, that I'm sure I read that Theon Haig uh, was expecting a baby. Turns out from uh, Mr. Haig's uh, rebuttal today that uh, that baby was unfortunately miscarried. So, uh, my sincere condolences to William Haig and his family, uh, to his wife in particular, uh, for uh, their inability to uh, successfully uh, have children at this point in time. But uh, I think that this is essentially a throwback to the dark days of conservative sleaze when the newspapers in those days, I mean, there wasn't so much internet in those days, but no, uh, journalists of digging up, you know, hiding in the bushes, photographing uh, people without their consent, and sort of making up stories. Uh, and of course, they do say there's no smoke without fire, and of course, when such stories are published, you then have uh, people like Mr. Haig then having to defend themselves in the media, saying that such uh, allegations against them are false, unsubstantiated, and uh, uh, very upsetting for himself and his family. Um, there hasn't been so much of uh, such uh, false allegations in newspapers here in the United Kingdom in recent years, uh, but uh, I think it's uh, very bad that, given that Mr. Haig and his wife are currently grieving for their recently miscarried baby, uh, I think it's completely unreasonable that such false slander has been levied against him. But of course, they do say that uh, he is the uh, best performing member of the coalition government so far. He, of course, the foreign secretary here in the United Kingdom. I understand that uh, those of you watching in America will know who William Hague is. Apparently, uh, Hillary Clinton has said that uh, of the uh, British foreign secretaries that she has spoken to so far, 
I think he's only spoken to David Moore about that actually previously, but uh, he says that William Hague is the one who he can do the most business with. So, uh, as the former conservative leader, he is a bit of an elder statesman in his party and a, uh, a very big political talent. Uh, although, as you'll know, if you live in the United Kingdom, he has been known as a bit of a political anorak, making a statement at the Conservative Party conference in his youth and then been uh, the youngest cabinet member when he became World Secretary and of course now in his role as Foreign Secretary uh, he is uh, someone uh, with, uh, who people across the political spectrum have a lot of respect for unlike this guy who people don't have a great deal of respect for at the moment now I'm this book of course released today in the United Kingdom September 1st 2010 I'm aware that uh, not all of you are watching this on September 1st 2010 I'm currently on uh, page 29, I finished chapter 1, uh, of course the, the media has been uh, broadcasting a lot about what's coming next in the book, but uh, as a lifelong conservative voter myself, my family vote Labour, I support conservative, I'm a so-called so Thatcher child, um, I do say that uh, from uh, what I've read of this so far, and I've read of biographies about Mr. Blair previously. If he was still in office now, I'd be inclined to vote for him. I know that a lot of you were opposed to the war in Iraq. I think the war was justified myself. Uh, and because I just saw before I started recording this blog, his one hour interview on the BBC Two here in the United Kingdom, uh, where he uh, uh, he stands by the comments that he has made in this book. Um, of course, the big uh, the big news that the media has been reporting about the book is his uh, alleged drinking problem. Interesting, from chapter one, from what I've seen so far, he says things like, oh yes, everybody had a drink who was in the room with me, but I decided not to have a drink because I wasn't feeling thirsty, that's something. Like that. Turns out that uh, he later comes around to saying that uh, he was a bit of an alcoholic. Of course, William Haig, getting back to him, he, uh, same, he said some time ago that... Uh, he drank 18 pints in one go, because <laughs> that uh, Tony Blair might have been just as bad to some extent, apparently exceeding the recommended daily alcohol limit. Um, I thought that he was a confident performer in Prime Minister's Questions. He says that uh, he didn't particularly enjoy it. That might explain why he transferred the format from twice a week to once a week, rather than Tuesday and Thursday he had on Wednesdays. Of course, um, um, it's quite a, quite a different type of memoir to read compared to those by Margaret Thatcher and John Major, which I have read previously. This one seems to be uh, uh, rather light in its mood. Um, I find it interesting, he says at the start, uh, I think in the, intro either in the introduction or chapter one, that he explains about how his father, Leo, uh, was uh, a conservative because he was from a working class background and he worked to make himself uh, access the the middle class type of lifestyle. Of course, that's essentially why I regard myself as a conservative myself. Uh, but of course, my parents they uh, think that uh, Labour and the socialist ethos is the uh, the party that is in the the best interest for a family from a working class background. But uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, although Mr. Blair was Labour, I think it's fair to say that. Uh, I share the same kind of uh, political ideology as him, to some extent. Um, I saw in the interview on the TV, before I started blogging, that he says that he uh, regrets bringing in the uh, fox hunting ban. Although, he says that uh, he still thinks that fox hunting is unreasonable. So, uh, get that tied up with uh, one of the key points that he made. That uh, when in government, you're not able to do what you want to do yourself. You have to do what the public will allow you to do and it seems from reading the memoirs so far that uh, he felt constrained that uh, most of the public were not happy to go on with what he was uh, advocating and that only led to his unpopularity he says that uh, as it says in biographies by Anthony Selden about him that I've read previously he concedes that uh, had he entered office fully aware of what he were to do from the outset then he would have been able to do more, but he feels that uh, uh, as he only started to do what he wanted to do when the honeymoon period was over and when 
his popularity was on the wane, it was then that he was unable to take things as far as he wanted to go. I understand that you know, the Labour Party leadership election started today, you know, to replace Gordon Brown, and I understand that uh, Ed Bald, one of the candidates in that contest, is apparently criticised by uh, Mr Blair later on in these memoirs. Uh, they say that uh, David Miliband is the frontrunner in that contest. He, of course, used to work in the number 10 policy unit for Mr. Blair. So, uh, maybe uh, that criticism for Ed Balls is uh, intended to help uh, David Miliband uh, seal the uh, cram, so to speak. And, of course, I understand that later on in the book, Mr. Blair does give advice on uh, how Labour can get back into office. Indeed, he did say in the interview that uh, Labour lost the election mainly, but it deviated away from New Labour. They do say that uh, the New Labour concept is dead, but uh, I like to think that uh, New Labour is effectively uh, a nice form of conservatism. Maybe an acknowledgement that socialism uh, in the United Kingdom doesn't work, and that uh, the only way to uh, improve uh, people's standard of living is through conservative policies because that then ties in with uh, the uh, uh, the credit crunch with the uh, government spending more money under Mr. Blair and Mr. Brown uh, than what it was able to afford. Um, I think I did read somewhere previously that Mr. Blair regrets not bringing in uh, measures to uh, prevent the credit crunch because uh, he, sa- he would say that in hindsight, no, too late for him to do anything now that, now that he is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, representative for the quartet out in the Middle East, but he did say in his interview that he hopes to, uh, return to, uh, public office again at some point in the future. He didn't rule out becoming the, uh, European Union President, of course, uh, that position was available last year, in 2009, and of course, in the end, it was, uh, Taken by, uh, well, I can't remember the name now. Uh, what's the name of the European president? Um, uh, it's that man with the silly name. Uh, no, it's completely gone blank. <laughs> Ironic that the president of Europe, I've forgotten his name, no, not exactly like the president of the United States, is he? <laughs> Okay, that's all I'm going to say for this 300th video blog. I blog on a daily basis about news-related topics and also my general opinions on the world. Do visit musingsofchriswilliams.blogspot.com where you can see similar opinions put in down uh, in writing. Of course, you can be my friend on Twitter and Facebook if you uh, check out the links mentioned at the end of this video. Herman Van Rumpau, that's the name that I was trying to remember. Did you know he's a naturist? I wouldn't think that by looking at him. (laughs) Okay, uh, thanks for your time, and until next time, it's bye for now. Bye-bye.